Hello and welcome to the Trials Evolution Track Building Tutorial Series. I'm your host, Cannibal Shogun, and the purpose of this series of videos is to share some techniques, tips, and tricks that'll help you to improve your track building skills in the Trials Evolution Editor. To start, we have three lessons covering some track building basics, but expect more lessons to be added to this series in the future. The videos in the building series are fairly broad and don't get into much detail concerning tools and features. If you're new to track building or are not yet familiar with the Trials Evo editor, each lesson will end with links to videos in our track editor series. The videos in the editor tutorial series are more in-depth looks at the various tools and options and should provide valuable insight if you're having problems using a specific tool or feature. You can find all the tutorials in both the editor and building series online on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash redlinkstv. You can also find further information and connect with other people in the trials community on the Red Links forums at redlinksgame.com slash forum. Now enough with these introductions, let's get to building. For new users, working with the Trials Evolution Editor can be a bit intimidating, but I'm here to say if you're just starting out, don't be discouraged. Building the basic trials track is actually a very simple process, and in this video, I'll show you just how easy it can be to get started. We'll start by launching the Light Editor. When you're entering the track building arena for the first time, the Light Editor is a great place to start. It has all the tools you'll need to build a track, while leaving out the more advanced tools that could slow your progress. Upon launching the editor, you'll be dropped into a random area of the game world. From there, it's time to look around for a good spot to build your first track. You can fly around the world using the analog sticks, or cycle through different areas using the bumper buttons. Once you've found a nice spot, your next step is to place a driving line. A press of the A button will place your first spline point and starting checkpoint. Move your cursor to where you want the track to go and press A again to drop another spline point and your finish checkpoint. The two spline points dictate your driving line, so at this point, you've created a very basic track. Give it a test run and check it out. How interesting this basic track is, of course depends heavily on the area we chose to place it. But regardless of whether it's a nice hilly area or a flat surface, we're going to want to place some obstacles to spice it up. Hitting any direction on the D-pad opens the new objects menu. There are a few categories to choose from, but the most useful category for new users is general. For this video, we'll keep it simple. After selecting general, we'll scroll over to the subheading ramps. Find a nice ramp and place it in the game world. To save time, I'll quickly place a few more throughout the map. Now let's give it another test run. When building tracks, doing these test runs should occur often. After a test run, we can tune the obstacles we've placed and add or remove obstacles as needed. Now that we've got a basic driving line and some obstacles, all that remains is placing some checkpoints. As a general rule, the more checkpoints we place, the better. Any area with a short lull between obstacles is a great place for checkpoints, and it's good to have as few obstacles as possible between each checkpoint. Again, testing the track repeatedly to tune obstacles and checkpoint placement will greatly improve the playability of our track. At this point, we now have a basic track. To learn more about the tools and techniques we used, check out these videos in our extensive series of track editor tutorials, available on the Red Links TV YouTube channel.
In our first video, we got started by building a basic track. In this video, we'll continue by covering a few ways to add depth to your track by creating curved driving lines and adding decoration to the surrounding world. We're not getting to anything too advanced yet, so just like last time, we'll begin by launching the light editor. Also, just like last time, we'll search for a good area and throw down two spline points. This time, however, we won't stop with just two. Once we've placed our first two spline points, we can add more by grabbing one of our place spline points and copying it. Now, if we place this new spline point so that it is not in line with the other two, we've created a curve in our driving line. We can create more spline points and add even more curves to our driving line, but for now, we'll keep it simple. To save time, I've already gone through and added some obstacles and checkpoints. Let's give it a test run. One thing to keep in mind when working with curved driving lines is that in some cases, the turn can appear a little awkward when the player is driving it in-game. Usually, the slower the bike is moving, the better, so it's generally a good idea to put some obstacles on or around the curve that will keep the player from gaining too much speed. Just as before, the general category is a great source for objects to use as decoration, and I encourage you to explore what is available. For this video, however, we will focus on two of the other categories. First is buildings. A great way to add some visual interest to your background and take up some space at the same time is to add some buildings. In the building category, there are many types to choose from, but the easiest to use are the seed buildings. Personally, when I have a curved line, I think it's nice to place something past the curve to let players know that they won't be continuing forward there. So let's take our first seed building and place it by the curve in our driving line. We can expand the building in any direction by selecting a wall and hitting the Y button. We can also expand up or down by selecting the floor or ceiling and doing the same. When the wood building type is appropriate for the track, we also have these nice pre-made background buildings we can easily place in the background. Next let's look at the environment category. In here we have a bunch of natural objects we can add to our environment. Placing trees and bushes can be great to fill in our background, but possibly the most useful tool in here is the terrain shaping tool. We can use this tool to modify the terrain, creating hills or ditches, among many others, on or off the driving line. It can also be useful to simply change the texture decal on the terrain. A great use for this is placing a driving line texture along our driving line. This not only makes the track more visually interesting, but also gives the player a clue as to which way the track will be going. And there it is, we've now made our basic track a little nicer to look at. Let's give it a final test run to see how it looks. For more information on the tools we used in this video, check out these lessons from our complete track editor tutorial series. So far we've created a basic track and approved upon it by adding curves to the driving line and decorations to the game world. Now, we'll move forward on our mission towards motocross madness by adding triggers and events to our track. This time, we'll be using some more advanced tools, so let's start by launching the Pro Editor. To save some time, however, we can load up the track we started in the last video. Triggers and events are more advanced tools. I'll provide a basic explanation as to how they function, but I highly recommend watching the trigger and event tutorial from our editor tutorial series to learn more. Events are basically tools that perform some sort of action, and triggers are how the events are activated. You can find a number of examples of triggers and events in action in the Example Groups category in the New Objects menu. The first thing we'll add is an explosion. You can make explosions by breaking the explosive objects like dynamite boxes, or you can use an effect event to activate explosion effects. Personally, I prefer the explosion effects as you get more choices for the look of the explosion. For our track, let's place a ground explosion near the start so that we get a nice big boom right off the bat. Next we'll place an area trigger and an effect event. In the properties for the trigger, we'll select the on hit option and choose the effect event. 
Now, when the trigger is activated, it'll send an impulse to the effect event. In the effect event properties, we'll choose the select event targets option and then select our explosion effect. Now, the event knows that when it gets the impulse, its job is to activate that explosion. Let's give it a test. That was fun. Next, how about we add in something else? I've created this obstacle here with a barrel pile too high for the rider to pass. The idea being that once the rider gets close enough, the plank the barrels are sitting on will break and the barrels will fall out of the rider's way. For this we'll need a trigger, a physics event, and a break event. Again, we'll start by opening the trigger properties and pointing it towards the physics event. We'll set up the physics event to activate physics on the barrels. The impulse can be passed along between events, so now, instead of placing another trigger, we can choose the Select Event Filter option in the Physics event and point it towards the Break event. Finally, we'll open the Break event and select the wooden plank as our target object. Now, we're all set. Let's give it a test run. Finally, let's end this thing with a bang. This time, we'll place an explosive object on or around the finish line, and since we're using an object this time, we'll use the break event to blow it up. In Trials Evo, we can also use checkpoints as triggers, so this time, we'll use the checkpoint instead of placing a trigger. This will ensure that this explosion can't be accidentally activated before the rider finishes the track. In the checkpoint properties, choose the Select Event Filter option and point it at the break event. Then, in the break event, make the target object our explosive. Now we're all set. Let's give the track a test drive to see the results. And there you have it, the basics of adding triggers and events. Again, I highly recommend checking out these lessons from our track editor tutorial series if you have any questions regarding the tools we used in this video. Triggers and events have many functions and uses, and the better you understand them, the more fun, creative stuff you'll be able to add to your tracks.